If you're ready to stop buying pumpkin puree from the store, but you're not quite sure how to turn this into a pie, let me show you my super fast and easy homemade pumpkin puree method. For more vintage kitchen tips and tricks, grab a copy of my free Heritage Kitchen Handbook. It's full of recipes, tips, and ideas that will transform your modern kitchen into a vintage one. Pumpkins are something we grow every year in the garden. It's always one of my favorite crops. They're easy to grow and we always get a really nice yield. So the trick is how do you turn a whole pumpkin that you either grow yourself or you buy at the store or farmer's market into homemade pumpkin puree? So there's lots of different ways you can do this. Oftentimes people will hack into this guy raw with a big old butcher knife and try to finagle the seeds and the guts and all the pieces out and then they'll bake it in an oven with a little bit of water. Now I used that method for years and there's nothing wrong with it, but I've since figured out a way to shorten the process just a little bit and save your fingers from any accidental slips of the knife. Now one little note before we get started, if you are purchasing pumpkins for use in recipes, definitely select a pie variety. Most of the time stores in September and October are carrying pumpkins designed for jack-o'-lanterns. And I suppose you could use those for pies, but you're gonna have much better flavor and sweetness if you select a variety of pumpkin that's specifically grown for its pie attributes. My favorite variety to grow is winter luxury pie pumpkins or a sugar pie pumpkin. And I get my seeds from Baker Creek. These are heirloom varieties, they're really hardy, they do well in our Wyoming climate, and I like their size. They're not too big and gnarly, and they're easy to manage in the kitchen. So the first thing we're gonna do is preheat the oven to 350 degrees, and then once it preheats, we'll just grab a cookie sheet or a baking tray and place the entire pumpkin on the sheet. I know it sounds crazy, and if you have a really big pumpkin, you may need to remove one of the racks in your oven to make room, but it works, trust me. So we're gonna put our pumpkin in the oven and then let it bake for anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours, depending on the size of the pumpkin. With a little pumpkin like this, I find that usually 45 to 60 minutes is sufficient, although it really depends on the variety and how tough the rind is and how big the pumpkin is. You can test the doneness of the pumpkin while it's baking by piercing its skin with a sharp knife. If the knife easily glides all the way to the center of the pumpkin with little resistance, then it's probably done and you can remove it to cool. Once the pumpkin is soft all the way to the center, go ahead and take it out of the oven and set it aside to cool, just till you can handle it comfortably without burning your fingers. And once it's cool, you're gonna grab your knife again. Next, we'll just cut around the top of the pumpkin, just like we were making a little lid for a jack-o'-lantern and pop this off. Now, once the top comes off, you can cut the pumpkin into fourths or fifths, depending on the size. We're just looking for manageable chunks. Now grab a spoon and scrape out the seeds and strings and set it aside. If you'd like to roast the seeds, you can do that later. But for now, we're going to keep our focus on the pumpkin flesh itself. Now depending on the variety of pumpkin, you may be able to just Gently pull off the rind and the flesh will come right off. Other varieties take a little more scraping, but regardless, because the whole pumpkin is soft, it should be pretty easy to remove the flesh from the rind. Now we just need to mash up the pumpkin flesh into more of a puree. Now you could do this with a fork or a potato masher if you're on the low tech end of things, but my favorite method is just to grab my food processor and give it a few whirls in there. Now this finished pumpkin puree can be frozen for many months or kept in your refrigerator for about a week. You can use it in your pies, your pumpkin breads, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin cookies, whatever your heart desires. Now the thing I love about this method is number one, I'm not in danger of cutting off a finger when I'm hacking through a really tough raw pumpkin. And number two, I don't have to worry about baking it with water, which often results in a more watery flesh and it's just a little messier. I think because the pumpkin bakes whole and it kind of steams itself on the inside, it gives the best texture out of all the methods. And that's it guys. Thanks for watching my pumpkin puree method. I hope you learned a trick or two. And if you have any additional pumpkin tricks, either for baking it or recipes that you like to make, I'd love for you to share them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll be back next week with another Homestead tutorial.